this morning. Are you gonna, I'm not, not going to be up here long, so don't, don't get worried, okay? I don't, I don't have the pastors. I'm, I'm stretching it to 30. I'm stretching it. If, it. if I get to 30 minutes, you know, I done added some stuff. <laughs> Amen. But let's pray. And then after I pray, you can have your seats. And we're going to read scripture now. We are, but I want you, we can do that while you're sitting down because it's a lot this morning. Amen. So bow your heads with me this morning. Heavenly Father, whom we bless and honor the presence of this day. We thank you for life today, and we thank you for granting me this opportunity to minister to these, your people. Oh, Lord, I humbly place myself before you. For today, Lord, fill me with your grace and anointing and power so that I can speak your word boldly and with authority. Deliver those who are among us who are under any bondage on this morning, any bondage of sin on this morning. Help us, oh, Lord, to hear your word this morning and graft it in our hearts on this morning that we will not sin against it. Oh, Holy Spirit, have full control of what's about to take place in this sanctuary. We reverence your presence on this morning. Have your way. Please, Holy Ghost, have your way. We just want to thank you. We thank you for your convicting word. We thank you for your delivering power. We bless you this day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. You may have your seats on this morning. Now, y'all praying for me, right? <laughs> now, if you, have it, um, if you do not know, every fifth Sunday here at Praise Center, the pastor has deemed it the Sunday that, you know, I'm supposed to get up and speak. And um, so... As Mother McCowan has already said, you know, I'm not a preacher, but I am a teacher. I do love to teach. And so if you were coming this morning to hear a hoop and a holler and a rear back, probably won't come in unless the, unless the Holy Ghost, like, transform, you know, do something. That's the only way you're going to hear that this morning, <laughs> okay? But we are going to go to the Word of God, Amen. If you would turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 15 through Romans 6, chapter 6, verses 15 through 23. And it reads, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even now, even so now, yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those in the mouth and in thy heart, in thy heart that thy, thou mayest do it? See... Okay, for we, oh, 21, what fruit hath ye in then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? 
for the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end and the end everlasting life. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. Now turn with me. Turn with me in your Bibles to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're going to start reading at verse 11 to verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11 through 20. Amen. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up from us? to heaven for us from to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it but the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it see i have set before you before thee this day, life and good, death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and that the Lord thy God shall thee bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, shalt thou be drawn away and Worship other gods and serve them. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over, the, over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the, the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, and thou, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed on this morning. Now, you know, yeah, that was a lot. That was about half the message, y'all. I'm almost done. <laughs> every single day, each and every one of us um, are confronted with choices. How many of you actually chose what to wear this morning? Yeah. You were in your closet or your dresser drawer, and you picked out your clothes. You know, some people don't have that ability. They don't, they don't have a right mind to choose their clothes, but... We, we had a choice to go in our closet, and whether it be a walk-in closet, whether it be a sliding door closet, whether it be a little closet, you had a choice to go in there and find your clothes. Some of us um, choose to obey the speed limit. You know, the little s white sign with the big black numbers on it, and right above it it says speed limit. That means you're... The limit, that limit, that's supposed to mean the max. That's a starting point for many people. Some of us choose <laughs> to obey the limit, um, you know, and take our chances of, you know, either risking an accident or getting a ticket. We just choose that. We choose to listen to sound advice. Advice given to us by our parents or by a preacher or a family member or a friend, you know, one that we consider wise. And oftentimes, the advice that's given to us, we weigh it and determine if we're going to use it 
um, if we want to, you know, if we want to take action, if it kind of agrees with us, that's when we use good advice. You know, we, we make the choices. How many of you really know that our choices shape our lives? You may, you know, today you thought that just getting up and going into your closet, trying to find something to wear, had to do with you just need to clothes on your body. But a lot of times when you go in your closet and you put on your clothes, it shapes your attitude for the day. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're having a bad hair day, it just might shape your posture, your where you might go okay. for the day. You know, things that you do, the choices you make, actually shape your life. But interestingly enough, the memories of the good choices they swiftly fade away. And the bad choices that we make, they seem to linger in our thoughts constantly. Now, remember I said your choices shape your life. So the good memories, the choices, they fade away. We tend to forget the good choices. Or we tend to, you know, they just don't pop up as frequently as the bad choices. The bad choices seem to have a better structure for some reason. The good choices, I don't know, they just come and go. And then you're like, where did they go? I thought I made good choices, but those bad ones are sticking with me every day. <laughs> the bad choices robbing us of our life, robbing us of our our joy, stealing our hope, stealing our security, stealing our happiness, yeah. stealing our peace, yeah. Those the bad choices. Right. The good, I, we, we can't quite almost remember the good choices, so what do they do? What, what do they do? They come and go so quickly, but the bad choices, we know that they steal things. They take from us. Mm. They weigh us down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they're leeches, bad yeah. choices. Yeah. Okay, often, um, <laughs> when I was thinking about this, when I was pregnant with Aaron, I used to call him my little leech, my little leech inside me because when I was pregnant with him, I was always sick and I was always throwing up and it seemed like they said morning sickness was supposed to be them first three months, but it was seven. <laughs> you know, I didn't get peace until the eighth month. You know, I couldn't keep anything down. That little leech, he was taking everything I put in, he was taking and, and, and pushing it back out or doing something. You know, he, 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 I was big as a Lord Jesus, a house, and I was big. At three months, it looked like I was six months pregnant. You know, I was just, I was big for no reason. You know, the little leech, he was taking my beauty, and he was taking my strength, and he was, he was just taking everything from me. And I was so glad when on that day, that grand old day of life came for him when he came out and pursued his own life and let me live mine. <laughs> I got mine back, <laughs> okay? I was happy about that. But your, your choices that you make, they t as they structure you, they, they structure your attitude, how you move, your actions, how you act and react to things, the choices that you make. We oftentimes lose who we are because we allow those choices to shape us. We allow the choices to consume us instead of it being the other way around. You shape your choices. You know, you orchestrate your choices. You, you orchestrate your, your, um, the process in which you, your life. We don't often think about that, but we allow choices to determine who we are. This morning, in these scriptures, I want us, and if you're looking for a subject this morning, as you have are thinking about some choices that you've probably made, you're trying to find those good ones. Yes, you're trying to hold on to those good ones. And those bad ones have taken things away from you. I want, and it has taken life away from you. I want to challenge you this morning to get your life. Get your life. Don't allow them choices to take control of your life. Don't allow those choices to, to, to shape who you are. Get your life. You determine where you're going in life. You determine how you're going to be perceived. You determine that. Get your life. Take your life back. Take your peace back. Take your joy back. 
Take your hope back. Take your security back. Take everything back. Because that's your life. Those attributes are just some of the attributes that we need to live a good life. So we can't allow them to be taken away by some of the choices that are made. You know, we all make a bad choice every once in a while. Amen. And every choice has a, uh, uh, what I want to say, a repercussion, has a, a result, a consequence. Okay, every a good choice and a bad choice, they all have a consequence. So you just have to deal with whatever the consequence is. Now, if it's a bad choice and therefore bad consequences come, that should not stop your life. That should not stop you in your tracks. Yeah. You should say, this is my life. Yeah. I'm going to keep pursuing my life. That is not going to hold me back, whatever it may be. Whatever decision. It could have been buying the wrong car. It could have been getting the wrong nail color. It could have been getting the wrong hair, do whatever. It's not going to stop me from going out and pursuing my life. Come on, come on. Get your life. Get your Don't life. allow your choices to take you back, to steal your life, okay? In our text, Romans um, chapter 6, verse 15 to 23, here, Paul d tells us to decide. He wants, he's calling for us to make choices. Why? Because in the, the first few verses, verses 15 through 19, because who we um, obey, we end up serving, okay? So if if you obey those bad choices that have taken from you, if, when I say obey, you actually stop. When you obey somebody, you stop and do what, th what they say do. Mm -hmm. Now, if your bad choices say now you're supposed to cry, you're going to obey. If you're going to obey that, you're going to always be crying. Mm -hmm. If a choice has led you to being depressed and it says now you're going to be depressed, you're going to obey that and be depressed, mm -hmm. right? So you begin to serve that thing which is taking from you, okay? Now, Paul opens up this particular text um, with a question. He's, in, he's talking to the people, and he says, since, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does this mean we can go on sinning? He answers this question right the next two statements. No, of course not. Okay, then he proceeds with an everyday analogy, which was everyday for this first century church, which I think we can today acknowledge, I mean, understand. We understand slavery. We understand that there's a master and then there is a slave, or there's a, a ruler and then there's the people that they dictate to, okay? Um, and in this, during this time, we had to understand, they were to understand that when slaves were passed in ownership from one master to another, the ways or the authority of the old master did not carry on to the ways and authority of the new master, okay? He used this for them because that was their understanding. They understood what slavery was, okay? That's why he used that. And once Paul says, you were slaves to sin, and sin was your old master, and you were forced to do all the evil desires of your, that your heart ordered you to do without the power to say no. Here he's, talk, he's not talking to sinners, y'all. He's talking to Christians. Okay. He's talking to people that have given their lives over to God, that who, who, who have accepted the word that there is a God, you know, and, and now they're going to live for God. He's talking to them, but yet... We see that they were a little confused about where they're, who they should obey and who they should serve. I want you to think about a time in your own life today or a, a situation or a circumstance that God has liberated or freed you from where you were powerless to change in your own way. You are powerless to change in your best efforts, okay? And think about it. It could have been a time, I mean, anger might have been a part of you. Rage have, might have been a part of you. Fear might have been a part of you. Insecurity might have been a part of you. The list goes on and on and on. You know, I, I got a whole a list here of, if you read the Ten Commandments, 
you can come up with a whole bunch of stuff that yeah at least at least 10 huh you know idolatry and greed yeah. even it, y- there were some down here and i was like wow you know anything that you put above god Anything that you put above God, including food, money, sports, internet, TV, your phone, anything, your hair, your clothes, your car, your money, anything, your house, your job. You might come to church. You might not come to church. You might open up your Bible or it might sit on a nightstand collecting dust. (laughs) Okay? Those things that, um, you know, maybe God freed you from those strongholds. You know, he turned things around. He, he enlightens you on, you don't need those things, but you need these things for me, <laughs> you know, anything. Sometimes we actually have to think about that because we think, and I'm, I'm, I'm not assuming that everyone is a Christian, but you did come to fellowship and worship on today. So you did have God in mind on today. So you kind of know something about God. And if you don't, by the end of this little lesson, hopefully you will want to get your life and get right and live for God, okay? Now, as you, when you think about those things, and we should often, as Christians, stop and say, okay, I know that I'm, I'm Christian and I know I'm living this life, but what's actually holding me back? from being free to worship? What's actually holding me back from actually serving God? Those things, those are strongholds. No, maybe you're not going out and killing people. No, maybe you're not going out and robbing people. You know, those things we deem big sins, okay? But maybe you're not in a right relationship with God. Maybe you don't have this prayer life that is required daily maybe you know even it, it tells us you know you know you have to die daily because you, you, every day when you wake up you know you, if some days you just don't want to get up and pray if you and you all about yourself you know lord today i really don't want to go down to the church it's 5 30 in the morning i really want to stay in my bed it's 15 degrees outside whatever can i just stay you know but you have to think about that. If God commissioned you to do whatever he's giving you an assignment to do, you have to think about that, okay? Sometimes we withdraw, we do things, um, and we, we still good Christians. Yes, you're still good Christians. I'm not saying that you're not. But we have to think about everything that we do. Is it really wholeheartedly committed to God? And if what is holding me back, if something is holding me back, God, deliver me from that, that whatever that one thing is so that I can continue to serve you. Remember, we're talking about what, what you obey, you will serve. Okay? In verses 20 through 22, it tells us to live a life of righteousness. To live a life of righteousness requires us to make daily choices. Paul paints a, a contrast here between the choices We must make as Christians. In the old, there is an old way of life, he was telling them, that was without Christ. And it resulted in a life in which we are are now filled with shame and and regret. Okay? That was the old life. Now, maybe that was, may have been your old, you know, way of thinking. Shame and regret. Things you're doing that are not of God brought shame and regret. Okay? There are consequences from that. There are consequences. And, and honestly, like I say, everything, you, every choice you make, you have to have, there is a consequence. And sometimes those consequences last even after you become a Christian. You still have to go through the consequence. He placed it in that order. You still have to, it just doesn't shut off because you're a Christian. It doesn't happen like that. But he, told, he was trying to get them to understand, but the old way you're living is not right. The contrast with the other way was the new life, which was a freedom in Christ. Our freedom in Christ results in a life free from the power of sin. Now our lives should reflect doing things that please God and lead to holiness. I hope that makes sense. Now, in the last verse in Romans um, 6, verse 23, 
In Paul's conclusion in this, he contrasts again the slave and the master relationship. It simply says, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, we often quote that particular verse and passage to um, when we're sharing the gospel to unbelievers or people that don't know about Christ. However, we kind of, like Mother McCown was telling us this morning, you know, there are things in the, there, the Bible and where, how it was written and, and the, the scriptures that we read, they, have a, they were written at a certain time for a certain season for certain people at that time. So you can't quite take stuff out of context. When you read a verse, read the one before and one after, and it might help yeah. you to know, you know, to get the, so we just don't just start quoting scriptures, okay? Because this particular verse, if you read the whole thing, and remember I told you, he's talking to Christians. He's talking to Christians. He's not talking to people that don't know who Christ is. So we have to, he echoes here, you have to choose. You can't have both. You can't live your old way and your new way too. You can't bring things from your old master to your new master. Do you go to your new job with ideas from your old job? You probably shouldn't. You get a different employee handbook when you start a new job because they have different rules and regulations and different things that they want you to do at the new job. Just try doing the stuff from the old job and see how long you last at the new job. Okay? As Christians, it's essential that our choices reflect our obedience to God. Amen? Amen. Choose wrong, and you just might lose your life. Think about that. Now, quickly, let's jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 through 20. Moses is also giving us a choice of life. In the first few verses, Moses assures that the people assures the people that the commandments of the Lord are neither too hard or too remote. I was reading a commentary when I was trying to get, you know, a list of sins out of the commandments. And it wasn't from a popular person who wrote this commentary. It wasn't popular at all. Because at the, the first paragraph of the commentary, he was saying that there are, you know, God has given us commandments rules and regulations but he doesn't expect for us to be able to live all of them i was like huh what the, what the world why would god give us some rules and regulations and say but i know you you it's okay if you don't if you don't meet them you know you don't have to meet that one go on and kill but just don't lie huh that <laughs> It's like, okay, I don't know who you are or where you're from, but they just need to delete you. The scripture tells us that the commandments of the Lord, they're not too hard. They are attainable. You can do them, all of them. Whether you think one is small and one is greater. Because sometimes we, in our minds, we always, and we always use, oh, don't kill. Like, Killing is so much, I mean, you know, yes, life is, but you shouldn't lie either. That's right. it's the same sin. Yeah. sin is sin, yeah. Yeah. and you shouldn't do any of it, That's right. okay? Don't talk about people. That's, right. That's killing people. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Sin is sin. And so we all should be, all the commandments we should live up to. Right. They're not too far removed from us. Yes, they were written. In Deuteronomy, they still apply in 2015. I don't know where our minds think, but this is a new this is a new time, a new day and age. So we gotta reconstruct the t- the commandments. God is still God. He has not changed, not one bit. He still requires the same things from us. I don't know. Sometimes we. Think about that. <laughs> okay, having assured the people that what God commands, that the commandments of God can be done, 
Moses launches into his final call for a decision. It's broken down like this. In verse 15, he addresses the choice between life and death, uh -huh. prosperity and disaster. Yes, yes. In verse 16, we are to understand obedience means life. Say that. Obedience, obedience means, means life. life. I guess verse 17 and 18. Understand that disobedience means death. Say that. Disobedience, disobedience means death. Death. Hmm. That sounds simple to me. <laughs> Verses 19 and 20, it tells us we must choose between life and death. There's no way you can have life and death at the same time. Now, it might happen from one second to the next, but definitely cannot happen at the same time. You have to choose. When you put it all together, what I'm simply saying here is choose life. Just choose life. Choose to live. Choose to obey God because we see here that God is life. Anything else is death. You might say, I'm living a good life, though. But when you come to worship services, you come in bound. You're not free to worship. For whatever reason, whatever reason that you've made to allow the enemy to take a choice from you to live. You've allowed him to weigh you down. You allowed him to take your life. Rather than living life and experiencing life to the full, you now walk around in a fog of confusion. Yes, you, Christian, you, missionary, you, mother, you, preacher, you, teacher, you, worship leader, you, you, you walk around in a, a place of confusion, and you know you're in your right mind. But you allow the enemy to use what you have done and use you know, where you're going and where he's trying to prevent you from going to hold you back and weigh you down, yes, take life away from you. Things you question now, you, things you've never questioned before, you're now questioning. Like, if God loves me, <laughs> why is this happening? You know God loves you, but you're still questioning God. Just questions you never should, you know, I will never ask God. You know, I'm just going to go through whatever God tells me to do, and I'm just going to go through because I know God is going to lead me. He's going to guide me. He's going to keep me. But now you're questioning God. What? 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 Why, why is this happening to me? If God cares, why am I stuck in this situation? You can get an attitude with God. If God is good, then why are things so bad? You know he cares. You know he's good. Those, they came out of your mouth. Yeah. You do acknowledge who God is, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then they put the, 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 the death on the end of that. Before long, those questions that seem to have no answer lead you to a life that has no hope. And a life with no hope is a life of death. The true enemy that you are fighting here is a spirit, and you have to know that. You have to acknowledge that. Not the Holy Spirit, but an evil spirit, a messenger from Satan himself. He's sent to attack you. He's sent to destroy you. He's sent to take your joy. He's sent to take your hope. He's sent here to take your peace. He's sent to take your life. Get your life. Don't let him take your life. I know many in this room today, and I know I do. I daily ask for God to restore my peace. Even if, you know, I don't even have to feel that it's gone. But I want it every day. God, just restore my peace. Restore my joy. Restore my hope. So that when I get up from here, that I can function in the way and the manner that you would have me to function. So that I can live a life 
that is pleasing to you. Many of you may not feel that way. Not, you know, I don't have my hope right now. I don't have any peace. Things are go seem so chaotic right now. I don't have any joy. I don't have anything to be content and happy about right now. I admit and I propose to you that it's time to take your life back. It's time to get your life. No, it's time out for allowing the devil to come in and walk right on top of you and just let him sit there and house right with you. It's time out. Get your life. Tell him he cannot habit live with you. We've been talking about authority all year long. Take your rightful authority with the devil and tell him to flee. Get away from me, devil. You can't have me. It's just, it, honestly, it's that simple. Get bold in God, who is life. So get your life. Stand there boldly to, and stand with the, tell the devil no. You're not going to have power over me. You're not going to have power over my mind to keep me confused. You're not going to have power over my heart and get putting all this anger and malice inside of me. You're not going to have power over my body. It's going to be healed. I'm not going to be sick. You're not going to have me. I said no. Because this is my life. You have to tell the devil that. Just as simply as you have a conversation with God, go on and have a conversation with the devil. And let him know, this is my life. God is in control, and I'm going to live my life. And you know what? I'm done. I just want to leave you with this last verse. James chapter 4, verses 7, and the first part of 8. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And it's one that we've probably heard time and time again. But we often seem to forget that it's there. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. I was trying to explain. Aaron was reading that scripture last night because he was helping me type my message and he was reading he said draw nigh not I said nigh near draw close come in to me and I will come in to you if God is life pull life into you so that you know pull pull on him get pull get your life pull God into your life Watch what he does to you. He's ready, he's willing, and he's available to you. Get your life today. And don't allow the enemy to control your life, but give it completely to God and live. Amen? Amen. Can you stand to your feet? And I just want to you to take this time just to close your eyes we're going to go before the Lord we make choices every day and some choices really don't matter very much what we eat what we should wear what car to buy what team to support other choices are very significant and have long-term effect on our lives whether it be what school to go to what career who will I marry? Where will I live? We also face choices between right and wrong. I need money, so should I go steal it? Or should I go and just give to the Lord so that he can provide for me? Then there are choices we make that matter for eternity. It is, a, it is the choice of what we will do with Christ Jesus. That is a choice that will affect how we live our lives in the now and 
where we will spend eternity in the future, whether in heaven or in hell. Today, God offers us life. God is our life. Joshua says in the, in the Bible, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. You have to choose. You have a choice. And Jesus says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, just full of me, full of life. How will you respond to God's offer of life on today? Some will choose to live, some will choose death. What will you choose? God, we adore you on today. We magnify you, for you are great. You are awesome. You are worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. You are the giver of life. And today, oh God, we want you to restore life back to us. Anything that the devil has taken away from us, oh God, restore back to us, oh God. We want to to totally turn to you, to you, oh God, for the life that we need to live for the good life that you have for us, oh God. So restore everything that the enemy has taken away from us, oh God. Bring us to a place, oh God, that you can dwell. Bring us to a place in our minds, in our hearts, oh God, in our spirits, oh God, that you can commune, oh God. Bring us to a place, oh God, that you can work with, oh God, and give us life. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we want to serve you, oh God. We want to obey you, oh God. We want you to dwell within us. Live within us, oh God. Oh God, don't let let allow the choices that we have made to consume us, oh God. But help us to consume our choices, to structure our choices that we can live for you. Help us to turn our thinking around, oh God. Help us, oh God. Don't let us be so easily taken from your love, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, anything that's in us, oh God, that's not like you, oh God, we ask you to take it out. In the name of Jesus. Heal and deliver. Set us free, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We want to bless you and we want to adore you. For you are a great God. You are a mighty God. You are a holy God. You are a righteous God. We just want to serve you the more, oh God. Give us everything that we need, oh God, to do your will, oh God. And if there is any among us, oh God, that need to know you even more, oh God, we ask that you draw them close to you, oh God, that you open up their hearts, oh God, and you change their minds, oh God, To know that you are the true and only living God. That you sent your son to die for our sins. That we can have life. That we can have freedom. That we can live. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we plead, oh God, that you allow your will to be done in our lives this day, oh God. Cast the enemy out of our lives, oh God. Cast the enemy out of our will, oh God. Cast the enemy out of our way, oh God. And give us our life back in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you and we adore you this day. And we honor you. We bless your name, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. We adore you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. We honor you. You are a great God. And we know that you will do these things for us, your people, on this day, oh God.
Bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. God bless you on this morning. Before the woman of God leave, is there anyone that needs prayer this morning? You haven't had your life and you need to get life this morning. Get your life back. While the anointing has fallen in this place on her. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. 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 We declare breakthrough even now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to choose life today. Hallelujah. We're going to choose life today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We choose life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings. Hallelujah. Comes with Jesus. Hallelujah. Relief. Renewal. Refreshment. It comes with the King of Kings. Hallelujah. The Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We bless your name and we glorify you today, God. You are the giver of life today. You are the giver of hope today. And we lean unto you, God. Hallelujah. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the very air that we breathe and mourn. Hallelujah. We choose you this day God hallelujah we bless your name hallelujah we glorify you and we honor and adore you God touch even now God in the mighty name of Jesus set every captive free God be glorified be magnified we choose you today you are the very hope that we lean upon you are the reason why we live we move and we have our very being break through even now God break up every follow ground Lord Tear down, break down every chain in the mighty name of Jesus. Release, renew, revive, refresh, oh God, redeem, oh God. You can do it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be glorified in us, God. We belong to you. Hallelujah. Glory to your wonderful name. Glory to your wonderful name, Lord. We thank you even now. Eye has not seen ear has not heard, neither has it appeared unto men. What good things you have in store, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Glorify. We glorify you, God. Work the miracle, God. Work the breakthrough even now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, do it for your glory, God, that you may be pleased with these, your people. Hallelujah. We belong to you. We king's kids. We're part of a peculiar people chosen generation yes lord in the mighty name of jesus we magnify you god hallelujah and we offer unto you our praise our worship my life belongs to you my life is in your hands your hands lord in your hands there is liberty hallelujah in your hands there is fullness of joy Hallelujah. I don't have to choose death, but I can choose life. And I, I want to choose life eternally with you in the mighty name of Jesus. For you are a king of kings, the king of kings, Lord. And there in you, there is life, oh God. Hallelujah. Life, not just simple life, but life more abundantly, oh God. I can have everything that I need in you, God. For you are everything that I need and more. And so we seek you even now, God. 
bring the refreshing even now. Bring the restoration even now. Break up, oh God, everything that's unlike you. Return the joy even now, oh God. Return the hope even now, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, peace of mind, God. For you keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, return unto the joy, oh, oh God, that only you can give, God. For the joy of the Lord is my strength, oh God. You are my redeemer, God. You are my strong tower. You are everything that I need and more. And we thank you even now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, God, even now, God. Yes, loose the shackles, loose the chains, loose the ties that bind. Even now, in the name of Jesus, God, be glorified, be magnified, be adored, God, as we lift up your name, as we call on your name, Jesus, my deliverer, my strong tower, Jesus, my way maker, the king of kings, my redeemer, the son of the living God, Jesus, we exalt your name today, and we count it as done. We declare, God, that eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Neither has it appeared unto men what good things you have in store for them that fear you. We fear you, God. We trust you, God. We're not afraid of you, but we respect you because we know how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. And so as we bless you, oh God, do as you said that you will. Come in and pour out your spirit upon us, oh God, that God will be made whole, God. God, heal up every wound. Heal up every broken hearted. Take away the pain, but bring in joy. God, you said that you would never leave us nor ever forsake us. And so you are the provider of our needs according to your riches up in glory. And you have so many riches for us. And so we pray for these young ladies that are here at the altar, God. They shall not leave here the same. But God, we declare that they have decided to get their life. Get your life. We choose life on their behalf. We touch and agree even now. We choose life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We choose hope, God, today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we choose your way. Hallelujah. And we give you glory even now. And we count it as done. It's in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. What an awesome word, Lady McCowan. Hallelujah. We choose life this morning. We choose God. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. For those that are tuning in online, we thank you for taking time out to worship with us here on pray at Pray Center. And if you have time and you are encouraged by this word, we need you to partner with us. Click on some of those buttons that's below the stream this morning. To either tithe at Praise Center or partner with Praise Center. The Bible declares uh, that he wants us to bring all of the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house. All right? And so whether you hear or not, God expects you to give your tithe to the storehouse so that there may be meat in his house. And then he said, if you do that, prove me now herewith, says the Lord. Won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that you won't have enough room to receive it? God is the God of life. And when you invest in him, he returns back into you life and not just life, life more abundantly. So I want to encourage you all to partner with Praise Center or tithe into Praise Center and we'll definitely it'll be used for the upkeep of God's kingdom. God bless you and may heaven shine upon you on this day. Remember, get your life.